Coach Dave Pat, no questions for Coach. Looking at James in the throwing game, it, it seems like he, he's got the, the deep pass down pretty good. Uh, what are you seeing from the intermediate passes? It seems like maybe he, he tends to maybe rush them a little or, or put too much juice on them. Uh, what, what does he need to improve with, with that type of pass game? Man, I thought Saturday he threw the ball well across the board. You know, he missed a one throw on the out ball um, in the second half that he had, you know, a good look at um, and just threw it with a little bit too much steam on it. And we missed, I think it was Malachi we missed on the left sideline uh, for a big first down. Other than that, I mean, I, I thought he was on target. He made good on target throws. He knew where he wanted to go with the ball. You know, he played with a you know, much uh, better sense of himself. And, uh, you know, he does throw that deep ball really well. Um, but, you know, we moved him around. He threw a lot of, you know, a lot of balls to the edge of the defense. You know, we protected really well. So he got a good look at a lot of throws. Um, so I, I thought overall, you know, I think he missed two targets the whole game. So I was really happy with how he threw it. You know, all year, been kind of waiting to see the, the offense execute the way you would like to see. And, use weapons like Tyler and that sort of thing. And how much of it was James needing to settle down and be comfortable in the pocket? Because the pass pro was better. And it had been better in the pit game. He just didn't necessarily feel that mm -hmm. and, and execute it that way. But how much of that has made it such a difference in terms of him being able to execute the offense and having a clean pocket and having the confidence to stand in there and deliver the ball? Sure. I mean, for, for any, at any quarterback at any level, if you feel confident standing in there and, and you get clean looks at throws, you got to a much higher opportunity to complete balls. And, uh, you know, he, you know, as opposed to the week before, he got his feet underneath him. He hit a couple early throws. He got some confidence. We made a couple plays. Um, certainly, you know, throwing the ball over their head for a 55 yard touchdown helps your confidence. Um, you know, so we tried to actually game plan it that way to get him off to an early start. Um, but anytime a quarterback could get a good, clean look at a throw, you know, set his feet and throw it. Um, you know, your, your completion percentage is going to be much higher. And, uh, you know, that, that certainly starts with the old line and the running backs. I mean, we protected really well. They were a team who had, you know, sacked a lot of people over the course of the year. I think they were, you know, fourth or fifth in the country in sacks. Um, and they tried, you know, they came after us and, and we picked it up uh, really well. And, you know, on the ones that we might have let somebody leak through, James did a really, really good job of avoiding them, <clears throat> getting out of the pocket, breaking contain. Uh, made a few throws down the field, threw a nice one to Tobias on a rollout, on a scramble, um, where we missed the protection and they came clean and he made the guy miss, stepped up around him and made a nice play. And then other times, you know, the real growth that I saw was he just got out, tried to find somebody, didn't find anybody and threw it away. Um, and, you know, when you can get that, you know, your protection's a lot better because you have, a, you know, an athlete back there who can make you right. Uh, if you do miss something or somebody slides off. So, you know, he had, uh, you know, a good feel of what he wanted to do, and, and those guys, you know, protected, and we caught the ball well. In my head, I kept going back to that very last drive of Saturday, and to me, just from myself looking at it, it, it just felt like it clicked, and it felt like that drive particularly was <clears> – <throat> something that maybe y'all looked at and was like, this is what we want to look like. This is the foundation of what we're wanting to do. Um, I wanted to know your thoughts on that specific drive and the execution of it. Were you in our meeting Sunday, <laughs> Sunday afternoon? No, I could have been. Yeah, you should have been. And you, had a good, uh, you would have had a good insight there. I mean, the, so every Sunday we go through and we watch um, the game in order and we kind of talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, and to finish the meeting, um, we went through that whole drive. We said, okay, this was a whatever it was, a 12 play drive. Uh, we ate up five minutes. You know, we threw it, we ran it, we had a good mix, we made some plays, we missed some plays. Um, but we showed some perseverance. Um, you know, we took a shot down the field, we missed, we went back on second down. Um, we threw the ball to the tight end. Tyler had a nice six yard gain. We got it to a third and makeable. We made the first down. We made a you know we made a nice catch, um, and then we called one and we missed a wide open throw. You know James got a little bit of pressure and ran it, missed an open throw, got back, got back on track, ran it, got it down in there and, and punched it in. So you know that was a good, um, you know good way to finish, because we did a lot of all, a lot of things well, 
um, but we also were able to make up for our mistakes by just executing. And it's been, you know, that's been something that, that's been missing. And when you really look at it, you know, our execution in the pass game was much cleaner. And when you have to defend all of the things that we do, um, especially with the ability to drop back pass and throw it to really good athletes on the edge and run the ball and the quarterback runs it and you throw a couple screens and you throw a couple sprint outs in there, um, it just becomes much more difficult uh, to defend and it makes it you know, much harder for them to gang up on the run. And so then you see you know, a couple of those you know, balls spit. You know, I think we, like, we were in 12 personnel, two tight ends in a game. You know, we had two runs over 20 yards. So that was something that they had never, they had never seen us run before. So, you know, just being able to mix those things in um, and control the game with your controlled passing game, um, you know, was a really good indication of where we can go. Has the improved pass protection allowed you, allowed you to get Tyler more involved in the offense? I don't know. If, I don't know if it has. I think you know. Sometimes you know a lot of the catches that he's you know that he's making are quick game catches and and that type of thing. We're, we've you know the the couple that we threw over the uh, the last couple weeks have been design throws based on what the coverage was, um, which was really wired for for him to be able to you know get open. I think uh, that might have even been Dylan Devaney on, on the catch on the one big catch, um, but you know. I just went to James and said, listen, dude, that, that guy's a big target, right? He's easy to find. He's got great hands, you know, um, and if you need to find somebody, you know, that's a good check down guy for you. Get him the ball and he's going to make a play for you. Um, and it's just a comfort level of, you know, the combination of calling the play and the execution of it, protecting, throwing, catching, um, and where we are in the game. Um, and, you know, if you target him a little, you know, I targeted him a few times there in those critical situations and it paid off for us. Uh, Virginia Tech has one of the more aggressive inside linebackers in all the ACC and Richard Ashby. I think he's got more solo tackles than all but four of all of Virginia Tech's defense <clears throat> has total tackles. Uh, talk about the preparation necessary to game plan for him, especially having faced some pretty aggressive defensive fronts the last few weeks. Mm -hmm. Well, these guys, as we talk about every week, I mean, everybody's different. We wiped the slate clean. We did that yesterday. We got a really good look at them on Sunday and, and yesterday. Uh, the biggest difference with these guys is they are, you know, you're going to see 11 guys within 10 yards of the ball. You know, they are going to crowd the ball, and it allows the linebackers to be run through guys and be uber aggressive because the safeties are standing right behind them. Um, so, you know, it, the, the cool thing for me is, you know, the defensive coordinator at Virginia Tech is legendary guy. And, um, you know, you always want to, you know, test yourself against the best people in the profession. I think that's, that's you know, a really cool piece of, of being in this league because you're facing great defenses every week. And every week's a different challenge, um, especially with a young group like we have. Um, and, you know, I remember one of my first, uh, you know, coaching gigs, um, when this whole Virginia Tech 4-4 defense was the rave, like in the in, like in the mid '90s, and um, you know everybody was running that defense, and I was cursing the defensive coordinator at Virginia Tech because we couldn't figure out a way to to, to beat it, you know. So that chased the, that defense chased a lot of people out of two back runs and things like that because they put all of those guys right near the line of scrimmage, and it's basically the same defense. Now, you know, the same tenants of that defense are in there now. So, um, you know, their scheme allows him to be really aggressive, you know, run through. And he, he's a little, you know, a little fire plug in there. I mean, he just goes through, he runs through people, he jumps over people. So, um, you know, we're going to have to find him in a run game, put a body on him. Um, and, you know, it's going to be different schematically, you know, against these guys that it's been the last few weeks. It seems like. You haven't caught a break in terms of the defenses you faced every week. It's been pretty stout, really, through mm -hmm. the, the back half of the season here. And I imagine that's kind of interesting for you to kind of gauge where your offense is versus really dynamic defenses and seeing different things as you're also trying to develop a young quarterback. Mm -hmm. Kind of what do you what do you make of all that? Well, I mean, you know, it's uh, it, it, it is a great challenge and it's you know, it's fun. You know, you, you go in on, on Sunday and Monday and you kind of see exactly what you're facing and you put the plan together. And, you know, my, my whole, you know, conversation with the offense has always been about us and, and doing, you know, the things that we do better and, um, you know, adjusting the plays as they fit who we're playing. 
Um, but if we block and throw and catch and run pretty well, we're going to be pretty good against everybody that we're playing. Um, and it's just a different challenge, a different set of plays, a different mentality, you know, and, you know, the, the Tuesday practice is the intro to all of those things. And, you know, we iron some things out tomorrow and Thursday, and, and then, then you go play. I mean, at this time of year, there's not a lot of secrets, right? It's about execution, having a couple wrinkles off of each thing that you're doing, but you're not really making wholesale changes. You're just trying to figure out what are the things that fit who they are. And, uh, and then, you know, you embrace the challenge and you go get them. Is there an offensive line who's particularly made a lot of strides grade-wise or just eye test-wise over the course of the season? I mean, they've all come a long way, but is there a particular that stood out? In Up front? Yeah. Or offensive line? I mean, I think that the, across the board, you could go to every one of our, of our you know, five or six guys that are in there and go back and watch who they were when we started this thing um, last spring and watch them now and they're not even the same guys you know their their confidence their communication their understanding their technique is totally different I mean those first few weeks of of spring practice you know we were in the mentality of running off the ball and trying to headbutt people you know and cut people and, and you know they you know still had that you know come off the ball in the triple and 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 uh, and knock you down mentality and now the, the concepts of zoning to people and, and uh, using their hands and getting their heads out of blocks, running their feet, um, you know, they're, they're all, you know, a bunch, uh, a bunch of guys that have gotten better and they've gotten, be they've gotten better collectively. You know, not only are they individually better in their technique, but they understand how to play together better. Their communication's better, how to pick up a twist. I mean, we passed off a twist in the game that was three guys passing off a twist with linebackers running and defensive guys running out that we never would have picked up even in camp. Um, but, you know, you have an elite offensive line coach and you have guys that are sponges and love to get better and love to compete. And they're really smart guys and their work ethic is tremendous. Um, and the thing that, that, you know, it has to be noted is they do a tremendous job of reviewing film, understanding the opponent, you know, really diligently working on understanding who they're playing, how those guys play, what they're going to see. Brent does an unbelievable job of teaching them that. But once you know, once you set them out, then they have to go do it, um, and uh, their preparation is is excellent. Um, and so, when you know mentally what to do, you certainly can do it physically much easier.